Let's imagine a situation where we've got a suture that is under a lot of tension from muscles or edema beneath it. So that incision is under constant stress trying to pull it apart. A situation I could think of would be a distal buccal incision over a third molar site where we're going to have some swelling afterwards. The patient's muscles are going to be pulling against it throughout the entire course of the healing process. And we're trying desperately not to let that incision dehiss so that it heals up nicely for that patient. Now, one of our options here, instead of a simple interrupted suture, would be to do a vertical mattress suture. Now, there are other choices you could do, but the vertical mattress is really cool because it's essentially like two simple interrupted sutures, again, with just one knot, and they're both in the same plane. So you get lots of strength there by having basically overlapping sutures tied with a single knot. So not a lot of irritation to the patient because there's that single knot over there, but you've got twice the strength basically in that line of the incision. So you're resisting the muscle pull. Now, we're gonna look at how to do this. So let's say that we're gonna suture up over here with the vertical mattress suture. Now, what we're gonna do with this is we're gonna take a way wider bite initially than we normally would. So we're gonna maybe go say five millimeters from the edge of the tissue versus say two or three. And we're going to go out on the other side of the incision, maybe about four or five millimeters instead of just two or three millimeters. Once we're done that, we're going to come back closer to the incision on either side and tie our single knot over here. So we'll start here by picking up the tissue. We enter in perpendicular to the tissue, out a little farther than we normally would. We're going to rotate this suture through here. And we're going to come out on the other side a little bit farther out here, there we are. So we've got our suture appearing here and we're gonna grab that tip and drag that through there. We've now got basically two wide bites here. Okay, so that's our first uh, pass through the tissue. We're gonna re-grasp that needle and I'm gonna spin this a bit just to see this a little easier. We're going to use a backhand approach this time and we're gonna pick up the opposite end of the incision here. We're going to penetrate a little tighter now to the incision line and we're going to rotate this through. We're going to pick up the other side of the incision and we're going to again come out a little bit closer to that incision line than where we entered in the first time. Now what we've done here and you can see very clearly is we've created four different points here. So two that are farther away, two entry points that are farther, and two that are closer. And as we pull this together, what we see is basically not much crossing there. Everything is kind of under the tissue, but we're pulling this together. So if I apply some tension here, you can see what's happening. This is starting to close up the tissue, and we've got two strands of the suture passing here underneath the tissue to hold that tightly together to resist the pull from the muscles. Now to tie up this knot, basically we're going to just control the needle again in our non-dominant hand. We're going to do two passes clockwise over the needle driver, grab the tip of the short end, and pull things together and apply a little bit of tension, which is going to bring the edges of the incision nicely together. We're then going to come back here with a counterclockwise motion, grab that tip, pull it together. Final one here, we're going to go one more time back the other way and we're now ready to clip that off. That is our vertical mattress suture.